Hello, and welcome to another episode of the William Branham Historical Research Podcast. I'm your host, John Collins, the author and founder of William Branham Historical Research at william-branham.org. And with me, I have my co-host, researcher, and friend, James Goad. And together, we're discussing the very weird things that preachers say, why they say them, and how they relate back to the latter rain healing revivals of the late 1940s through the 1960s. Well, James, we have one of those really fun topics to talk about today. <laughs> um, th- this one is just so weird. Like, of all the things that we've done that are weird, for me... This is the one I just completely, I don't understand it. Like, it's out of the context of even Pentecostalism, and yet this is a Pentecostal rule-based religion, very legalistic. And when when you really think about this, it, this is just so weird. And it's came up, gosh, I, I don't know how many times now. It's come up on these uh, Our Stories programs that we do. Um, I think there was one segment I had cut out that it was in, and then recently it came out in another one, and... <laughs> everybody's like i don't understand what this is why why are we talking about (laughs) women's feet (laughs) yeah it's so strange because you know when, when you analyze these these groups that get so heavily legalistic and you analyze their rules and regulations that they have as you go down the list it gets stranger and stranger and more just bizarre the further you go and when you get down to the point of like just somebody wearing flip-flops is a sin it really is hard like you said to wrap your mind around it because you're like it's flip-flops yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there it's like how can this be satanic and evil and it's one of those things that i i, I as much as i've looked into this i've not been able to find a good reason why any of these guys even even take this approach other than just to control the 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 look of their members to such a degree to create a conformity in them and and that's really the only thing that i can i can see and think because when you look at it it's their flip-flops man it's like what in the world are we doing here (laughs) it's unreal man and the last conversation that i had about this the the lady was telling me which i didn't even know this problem existed but she was saying that you know the women they often wear the jean skirts and the message and their church got so legalistic that if you had the zipper around on i think it was on the butt or something (laughs) you're you're being preached at because you had a zipper on your butt and the whole thing man (laughs) like come on really (laughs) a zipper is going to deny you access into heaven you know everybody's got a zipper it doesn't matter if it's on the front or on the back but they were talking about (laughs) talking about that and then i I just asked, you know, was the open shoes a thing? And the, it's it doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm I'm a man. I was interviewing a female, so you know, her attraction to the other gender was different. But for me, this is an unattractive thing. It's like the most of a woman. This is the body part that you just don't want to touch. It's the part that's stepping in the dirt, man. And I know that there are some cultures that do this. So. I'm not trying to offend those cultures, but in the United States, we have <laughs> we have developed mentally in a different way, and it's not even attractive. So, the only when you try to think how they establish this doctrine logically, and you're thinking about the feet, and the reason these rules exist is because if you show just a little bit of skin, it might lead you to hell as a woman because you made a, a man lust after you. Well, you can't make that leap to make the lust after the feet. I can't anyway. Maybe you're different, James. Maybe maybe you've got a feet <laughs> thing, but I don't. <laughs> no, I can say that's not me either. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it's crazy because, you know, the, to the extent it, it's – a lot of these ministers don't even take it to the point where it's – um, it's just a difference of opinion. No, it's, you are literally going to hell for wearing flip flops because it's that sinful of a thing to do. And it, it, it's, it, it breaks my <laughs> brain, having, John. <laughs> I'm having so much trouble. You're going to, you're going to be annoyed with me on this episode. I'm having so much trouble because this is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's ridiculous. Oh, man. I, so, I think at this point, probably the best thing for us to do was just to be roll into this first clip and just start the insanity there. Because, you know, we, we've got we've got a minister taking a very hard line stance against flip-flops. And it reaches a level of, of absurdity that I don't think we've quite hit yet. But uh, 
Let's give it a whirl. The message is against tight dresses, things that provoke people, short dressing, short uh, skirt, all those kind of stuff. But as long as your dress is decent, make it beautiful, not for your pastor, for the king. Amen. Amen. You don't go to church like you go into a flea market. We need to correct this. That's right. Amen. That's right. You see a sister for a whole year, blue skirt, blue skirt, blue skirt, blue skirt, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. They leave the message, they begin to dress nice. <laughs> I'm dying here, man. So let me get this straight, James. So not only is the feet to be something to lust after for whatever reason, for wh this this minister may have a problem with that. I don't. I, sir, I, I can assure you I do not. But I'll give him that. Maybe he's got this foot thing. But to make the claim that women are leaving the message just so they can bear their feet for the world. Oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> Oh, man. It, yeah, it, it's crazy because, you know, there, there's always this uh, slippery slope fallacy that a lot of preachers use very heavily in the cult because it's like, you know, they'll take something that seems so innocuous and then they'll draw this really bizarre trail of of connections between all these various things and say like bef you you just start wearing flip-flops and before long you know you're you're a prostitute on, on the street corner you know and it's just like whoa, whoa how do we get from how do we get from there to there but th that's literally the the the, <laughs> the way some of these guys take it you know and it's ridiculous i mean they say that you know a, a sister in the church goes <laughs> and she starts wearing flip-flops and then she leaves the group it's like that's like, all right, man. I mean, maybe the reason why she leaves the group is because she starts wearing flip flops and goes, this isn't satanic. So if this isn't satanic, what else are you wrong about? <laughs> you know? So maybe that's really what's going on here. Not the fact that the flip flops themselves are causing her to sin. <laughs> <laughs> she's dressed like a prostitute because she's sewing her feet and not just on a street street corner in James. <laughs> this guy literally said she goes to the flea market. That's where yeah. all the men go to look at women's feet, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. And, and you know, it's uh, it, it's really hard when you see stuff like this. It's really hard to take this stuff seriously. But at the same time, it is serious because there are people in these churches who are who are literally held captive by these speakers who they look up to and they hear them say these things and they're like, well, if that's going to take me to go to hell, I don't want. I don't want to go to hell and I don't want that for my family. And so they'll completely rid, you know, if their, if their daughter or their son or whatever has a closet and they, they have flip flops, they'll go and they'll take those things out and they'll burn those things because, you know, those are satanic. The preacher said so. And, you know, he, he's looking out for me and my well being. He wouldn't say something like that just <laughs> offhand if, you know, he wasn't feeling the leading of the Lord. And that's the danger in a lot of these churches is when they get you to throw away your flip flops thinking it's going to take you to hell. They've got you right where they want you, and they can get you to believe anything. And it's punishment, man. Pure punishment. I can assure you that when they burn those things, it stinks to high heaven. <laughs> I, I used to, I don't, I don't actually don't wear them much anymore, but I used to live in hotter climates and sometimes I would, I would wear flip flops while I was working and I never forget I dropped something hot and it was excessively hot <laughs> and it hit my toe, which hurt really badly. But then as I stepped my toe back, I actually stepped on it and burnt, you know, it was melting through the, <laughs> through the flip flop. That rubber Stinks. So whenever they tell them to burn their flip flops, or it's pure punishment. But you know, in the end, you have to take a step back and just. I, I'm separated from this thing, so I can laugh about it. But you're right. When you're in it, this is so destructive because not only are you belittling the women in your church by telling them, like the prophet said, they're divine, designed by Satan himself to deceive the men. And so, and, and deceive the men through sex. He called in that same sermon, William Bradham calls them sex exposals. And um, he's talking about exposing the flesh. So when you link 
that these these women are designed by Satan to deceive men and lure them into sex. Combine that with the flip flop doctrine. Well, <laughs> they're designed by <laughs> Satan, and Satan is going to show you brothers her feet if she leaves this cult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's crazy because you know the the whole thing when when you look at when you look at this thing from its origin and you look at Branham and how he talked about women and then these very same men will quote Branham and then say my beautiful wonderful sisters you know we're so we're so pleased to have you and all you're such a you're such a gem in the crown of god and all these sorts of things that they'll say and then they'll go and they'll repeat horrible doctrines of Branham and everything in the message is based on his view of women. It all comes back to that for from the women's side of all these doctrines. And you can't escape that. And you look at something as innocuous as, as flip-flops and you're like, okay, when you when you take it back to the origin of how this man is thinking, and then you look at how these men today are thinking and drawing a conclusion, you can see a linkage because women are so devalued and their thought they're looked upon as though their only existence is to sexually stumble the men. And you take all of the responsibility away from men to be better. And you say, well, you, you were trying to be better, brother, but that woman, she got behind your defenses. And because of those flip flops, brother, you didn't have, you didn't have a chance, you know? And so we've got to preach harder on those women to keep them aligned so that we don't stumble. And it's, it's so backwards and it's so destructive and so hurtful to people. And it, when you're in it, it doesn't quite stand out. But when you get away from it, it just, it just flashes like a red light. And you're just like, I cannot believe that I listened to this stuff. And, and, and there were people around me that were being emotionally destroyed because they were having to, they were being told just because they wanted to wear flip flops, which is, there's no problem with wearing flip flops that they were sinful and going to hell and probably taking other people to hell with them. Man, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's frustrating. <laughs> it, it's crazy, man. Like I say, I'm, I'm going to annoy you with all my laughter. I just, I can't help it. This is funny, <laughs> funny stuff. But so, and, and I've also got a problem here, James. Uh, this is a very difficult episode for me to do. I'm going to be out in the open, I'm going to admit it, because I have a process. You find these videos, we get the topics, and I do some studies on, you know, here are the weird things that these ministers are saying. Where did it come from? How has it progressed over time? How does it end up what it is today? And I'll be honest with you, I'm trying to keep this episode <laughs> kind of G or PG rated. <laughs> this is a difficult topic to study, man. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I started to look this up and right i don't recommend anybody who's listening to look this up on google but if you try to google this subject <laughs> you're gonna get all kinds of things and the number one hit again i'm i'm keeping this pg rated so i'm, I'm gonna say the word that may not be pg but i'm leaving it at that so don't don't worry that i'm gonna go too far but the number one hit on google is an article from the Discover magazine that says foot orgasm syndrome. Yup, it's a thing. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to read anything more in that article. If you want to study that, I don't recommend that you do. Go ahead and study it if you're of that mindset. But the thing that I keep coming back to, James, I went to churches from Arizona to South Carolina, everywhere in between. They all had different doctrines. You you know, when you go out west, you've got the men who are saying that the women's feet are going to lure men to sex like this. And you got the, you know, the women in Georgia, they all wear flip-flops. You know, it's it's hot in Georgia. You don't want to you don't want to go without your flip-flops. And what what it came down to, not on this subject in particular, but there were there were different rules for different sects of the message and then within each sect there would be different rules for every church and sometimes a sect would have multiple churches in the same city and some of those churches would not even fellowship because they did not adhere to the rules in the same way they <laughs> fighting each other man there was no <laughs> there's no brotherly love <clears throat> but what it ended up to be is when you get one minister who really really struggles with something whatever that is you're going to find like 
80, 90 percent of his sermons are talking about the thing that he himself struggles with. And the example I'll give for this, which is really funny, is <laughs> I went to this church and this minister, was, he had, you've been to these churches, James, where they just call you out right from the audience. And there, there was a quite attractive lady sitting up front and <laughs> he looked at, you have a seductive spirit on your soul, <laughs> which, you know, meant the guy was having a little bit of trouble looking at the lady who's attractive up front, right? <laughs> well, these men, you're going to find a large percent of the content in their sermons about the things that they themselves struggle with the most, and they'll just call it out because they're struggling with it. I actually get this. I'm not going to fault the minister for this. If you have a problem, then the Bible says, confess our sins to one another, right? But they're not confessing it. They're turning it into this vicious attack against the people instead of an open confession. So where it could be used to do for good and say, hey, look, brothers and sisters, I struggle with this thing, and I hope you don't struggle, but if you do, here's how I came to God. It's you people who are doing this thing which bothers me, you know, on and on and on. <laughs> All of this to say, I don't know why these men are preaching against the feet. Do they have the trouble? <laughs> are they like the minister who's got the attractive lady up front? Do they have these this foot fetish? Are they... I almost said it. I'm going to I'm going to leave it. Whatever the Discover article said, do they have this problem? I don't know. <laughs> but all I can say is I, this is such a weird thing. I have trouble researching it. And when I saw the first, I think I saw the first five hits on Google, I said, nope, not for me. I'm not going to look at these <laughs> things at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's ridiculous. And like you said, the, the, the way that the the entire paradigm of the <laughs> of, of the responsibility structure inside of inside of these these churches is set up is is that, you know, it's not that I'm faltering which is bad enough it's that you're causing me to sin and so really i'm trying to be good you caused me to stumble so therefore you are what's wrong in this picture not me because i'm a holy servant of god i i can't i can't stumble or you know my brothers aren't trying to stumble you know you're causing them to stumble and it's that inverted way of looking at things is so wrong and it absolves men of their responsibility to be better and yeah. you know by making the women a scapegoat and it's so destructive and it's so evil and you know they get away with it because they'll throw the men under use a token example to throw the men under the bus and say men i'm not leaving you out of this too you know and they'll they'll run into uh, our next clip <laughs> they'll, they'll use they'll use things like uh you know men wearing shorts which is actually very interesting when you look at the history and their prophet for example um why shorts men wearing shorts is is, is so bad but uh but anyways <laughs> let, let's take a look at this next clip and uh and we'll see how they throw men under the bus too you get the holy ghost on the inside of you i'm gonna tell you you can take that land you can have holiness you can have purity you can have joy come on amen you can have everything that the word of god promised you don't have to stand at the borderline and say well i can't do it i can't live right it's all right for our boys to wear shorts i just it's just william Branham's opinion i'll tell you what borderline believer you better come on in you better get another spirit on you. You're at Kadesh Barnea. <laughs> You're at Kadesh Barnea. You know, <laughs> and, and in the Old Testament, remember, James, the men were instructed to gird up their loins, which meant take your robe. The men wore, <laughs> wore the garment that pertained to the woman in the Pentecostal mind. They wore the robe, which looks very much like a dress. But when they girded up their loins, it meant... You can't run as fast. You might trip over your dress, you men who are wearing these <laughs> these female garments in the Old Testament. So they rolled them up, and they would wrap it around their legs. So they're exposing their legs where they can run fast. Gird up your loins. That's <laughs> That was the custom back then, right? And cust the customs are just completely ignored in these Pentecostal cult 
type groups. But <laughs> the irony, so he's blasting the men, James. And this is one of the few times that you'll find them blasting the men, even though, like you said, William Branham, is, we caught him on photograph <laughs> wearing the shorts, and he had tan knees, which meant that he was wearing those shorts quite frequently. But <laughs> so these guys are blasting the men, which is unusual. Usually it's blasting the women. But when they when they do blast the men, usually it is an indirect insult at the women. So you you and you'll find this in William Branham's sermon. So you men who let your women do X, you men who let your women do Y. Notice in the feet thing. He bypassed the men and went straight to the women. He didn't say, <laughs> you men who let your women show their feet and going to send some poor, lustful sinner to hell for looking at your big toe. <laughs> he didn't do this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy because, you know, I, I know this particular thing, um, you know, I, I remember growing up hearing these things all the time, how it was so sinful and so disgusting and um, homosexual even for boys in the church and even men to wear shorts. And it was so disgusting in the eyes of God for, for them to do such a thing that it, it, it was such a it was such a foregone conclusion that you should even even attempt to do something like that. And, and if you saw somebody else do it, you should look upon them with shame and be like, how how dare you bring such a reproach against God that you would dare dare to wear shorts, brother. That's such a disgusting thing. Um, you know, and then you look at their very prophet who is caught on picture photograph wearing shorts in a, in outside. Like this wasn't in his house. Like some ministers will tell you like, you know, maybe in the home in private, you know, you can wear shorts, but out in public, brother, you should definitely never wear shorts. And then their, their own prophet who, you know, could do no wrong in their eyes, you know, um, <laughs> is caught wearing shorts and that doesn't at all affect the doctrine. It's just, nope, we're going with the, you can't wear shorts and it's a sin. And <sighs> It's, it's ridiculous, man, because, because, because that picture alone should have made that doctrine go away immediately. But if anything, they've doubled down on things like this and, you know, they continue to enforce it in their churches and tell people that they can't do things that, uh, for all, for all intents and purposes, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, this is the only doctrine, I'm not going not gonna to go too far with this, but this is the only doctrine of men's dress code that exists in this cult at all. This is the only <laughs> one. All of them were directed at women, the female gender. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice if you scan through the sermons, this is the only one when he talks about it, he often uses the word sissy or something that, to make the men seem effeminate. And remember, this was <laughs> all of the women's dress code was was a, a fault of the woman for causing the man to lust after them. Well, the only men's dress code is using the example of an effeminate man. In other words, you're going to lust after the man. And <laughs> this is coming from a, a person who was accused by the ministerial board. William Branham was accused by the ministerial board of being homosexual. He even admits this on tape. So the only time in which he mentions the men is whenever it's lusting after the men. And I still i go back to these guys usually do not preach against something so strongly unless they themselves have a problem with it and um, i'll just leave it at that <laughs> it's crazy because you know there are so many things out there where um shorts just make sense and um you know whether it's activities and all sorts of things and, and I, I know that um <clears throat> you know you would even have um you know, girls in, in the churches I grew up with who they would, they would want to be in sports. And so they would, you know, even the, even the shorts thing was a problem for them because it's all like, it's starting to look like you're wearing pants, sister. And we don't wear pants in this group. Um, and you know, the women don't wear pants and, um, you know, and so they'd want to get active in sports and, and there would be all these things that women would try to do to try to make, they would try to, color inside the lines as much as possible without damning themselves to hell. So they would wear 
if they were as like, so let's use basketball as an example where, um, you know, a woman in the church would have to be really active. You know, she would wear shorts so absurdly long that it almost became comical sometimes because there's, it's like, are these even shorts anymore? But, but trying to be inside of the dress code that they put forward. And it's just all these hoops and stuff that they go through to try to have to do just even be a little bit normal in society and the entire time they're feeling like they're on the knife's edge of being a Jezebel and going to hell because they just want to be normal and play sports and you know they look at it like I'm being modest I'm not I'm not doing anything wrong here but they're being told that they're just the fact that they want to wear these shorts sometimes they're being told that that is a that is a lustful spirit that's trying to get on them to to get at the men they're the devil is using them to get to the men as a trojan horse through wearing shorts trying to do something as simple as just play some basketball and be normal it's it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah and i should probably qualify your statement whenever you said the the women aren't wearing pants to those who did, weren't raised in this religion it sounds like you're saying they exposed a lot more than the toes man <laughs> but, <laughs> but no they you know the long dress <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) But, um, you know, I'll never forget uh, as an adolescent teenage male, you know, hormones raging in all of the boys as as with any normal human being who is a male. This this happens. This is part of your chemistry and your makeup. I remember some of the guys talking who were in in this cult. And (laughs) one guy was like, you know, I'm really glad the women wore dresses because you really get to see a lot more of their leg whenever they're doing sports. And uh, (laughs) (laughs) It's, you know, modesty is not why they do this. I can assure you that when these women women move around and they're forced to wear the dress instead of the pants, I can assure you that there's a lot less modesty going on underneath that dress. And um, (laughs) the guys I was with were very, very eager to point this out. I'll just say it like that and I'll leave it at that. But I recently did a interview with a woman who this this bothered her you know i'm laughing about it i'm i'm going to continue to laugh i apologize to you women this is funny i can't help it <clears throat> but it was to a woman it's not funny the the way that they ridicule you insult you does he tell you you're designed by satan and you're low the the phrase was lower than a dog or a hog basically they've put you so far down that you're in the mud with the hog that's how this religion is if you're a female and she was talking about how after she had escaped and she did not want her daughters to have to w- try to play sports with now she she had the idea of modesty she you know wear the dress and then she would put you know pants or uh, sweatpants or something underneath so it didn't show what these <laughs> what these guys were noticing but I grew up in sects of the message that they did not allow the women to wear the pants underneath the dresses, which goes a level beyond the, <laughs> you know, the reason that this exists is quote unquote modesty, even though it's very immodest in many cases. It goes beyond that because they would not let them wear it underneath the dresses where nobody could even see it unless your skirt flies up. (laughs) But they would prefer that if your skirt did fly up while you're doing these activities that you show a lot more than the toe, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And and that's why that's why these these doctrines, I guess you could call them for lack of a better term, are so harmful because they they do not co- coerce come together in any way that match or make sense in a way that's that's even cognitively um understandable to the brain because you're looking at this and you're like i'm trying to be modest so oh i've got to wear the dress because the the church tells me i have to wear the dress and i can't wear pants you know just just to wear pants because that would be sinful but covering the pants with a dress that way i can be a little bit more you know, I, I, I can I can be a little bit more agile and on the sports court because that way I'm not worried about exposing myself in a way that that's that's would be considered indecent by the group. And the the very ministers will attack this and say, you can't do that because you're still wearing pants. It's like, it doesn't make sense. And that's because there is no logic to these things. It's like, no, this is just what we, we believe. You have to submit. You have to... Um, 
deny your own intelligence to even be a part of this thing because when you think through these things logically you're like no there, there's no there's no way that this works but the very act of denying your own intelligence to conform to these things is a tool of manipulation that they use to control and and, and get people to behave and and to to stay in the group because they're no longer relying on themselves to think for themselves they're relying on the central figure and in Branham's day that was him and in these local churches now there that's the pastor and that sets things up for for very destructive and very bad things <laughs> It does, man. And I, I'm, I'm again, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm actually crying here. <laughs> you know, it is for control, solely for the sake of control. And, and I can prove this by example, right? So out in the West, when I was growing up, you couldn't wear, <laughs> you couldn't wear the open toed shoes because you might lure a guy to hell through your big toe. Well, on the other side of the country, in the message churches, you could. And the guys usually wore shoes we would have you know some people wore boots or they had dress shoes some people wore tennis shoes to church the guys never showed their toes the women did <clears throat> and again i I apologize if this is rude to the women. <laughs> I'm just going to come out and say it. I am not attracted to the feet. And some of you women had some nasty toes. <laughs> I'm going to say it, leave it at that, because I have to prove this point, and I have to say that. And I don't have a foot thing, right? Some of you women had some nasty toes. And there is a solution in the non-cult world to this. If you have, if like fungus in your toes is a thing it's a real thing it's a it's a problem that some people deal with when well, the real world women paint their toenails right well in the cult the <laughs> <laughs> Those who couldn't show their toes, they didn't care if they painted their toes. But on the other side of the country, you had ministers who allowed the open toes who preached against painting those open toes. And so the dynamic was completely different, right? And and <laughs> <laughs> logically, how does this make sense? Whenever they talk about cosmetics, they talk about the painted face Jezebels, you know, because <clears throat> the final act before Jezebel prepared to die was she made herself up in the way that all of the royalty did in the old days. That's that's the way it worked. They, they say that this was her sinful act, and this is why she died, ignoring the fact that she brought all of Israel into idolatry. <laughs> that was her crime. <clears throat> they say that the painted face was her crime, not the painted toes. So why <laughs> then, be, other than to control the women, why would they say you can't paint those nasty-looking toenails? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's ridiculous. And, and, you know, if, if you try to look at this through a lens of modesty, modesty is um relative to the culture in which you live and you know if you would rewind the tape back to the 1800s the women of today in the cult who would be presenting themselves modest would be considered um anything but modest because they're 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 not up they're not living up to the standards of that day and you know those very same people thought that they were upholding the right standards for what modesty is so it's it's a very relative thing and it changes over time as culture changes and and depending on where you're at in the world at different points in time um and it, it's 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 kind of a moving target in a sort of way and just like you said how you know even you know makeup and all these things and jewelry and, and and these things that are that are attacked so heavily in the message um the very same minister who attacks these things will read you a psalm of a woman being adorned in in fine jewelry and all this kind of stuff like that and use it to illustrate god and and how he and how he loves his bride and, and he'll he'll adorn her with all these things and then you're like but they're all still on the women but you can't do that yourself because that would be <laughs> sinful but god's ideal of a perfect bride has these things so it's it's completely backwards and none of it makes sense and at some point it's got to be by design because it's it's so ridiculous that it it reaches a level of absurdity <laughs> exactly man and you know 
that I, I'll never forget when I first came across that passage that you're referring to. I think it's in Ezekiel talking about God's faithless bride and talking about how the bride of Christ, uh, the bride of God is Jerusalem. And when you really think about <laughs> all the doctrines that are built on God's bride, that gets really weird too. But specifically, it says, I adorned you in the way that is pleasing to me, God, and I put a ring in your ear and I put a ring in your nose. Think of all these ministers, what would happen if all the women showed up to church with her nose ring, man. They would, oh, yeah. you'd, you'd hear all kinds of sermons, and it wouldn't just be the toes, it'd be the nose. And, you know, <laughs> but, but things progressed in a funny way, right? Because the Apostle Paul, he was going out into all of these nations when Christianity was being birthed, and he was spreading Christianity. And how many of how many of the sermons that we have access to read, or the letters we have access to read of Paul, did he say, and you women who are wearing those togas, who are exposing the shape of thine breast and, <laughs> and the, the skin of thine <laughs> abdomen? You don't find a single one, but that was the culture back then. And then what happened? And as it progressed into America, you had the Puritans and the Quakers, and they were they were against the sin of showing the flesh. But that's how the nation was founded. So Americanized Christianity progressed in such a way that they they built upon the Quaker idea and the Puritan idea and showing the skin. <clears throat> Anytime you hear the word modesty, which <clears throat> the word in the Bible has this broad array of meanings. It's not just the skin. It's, in other words, don't be gaudy, right? But they, <laughs> they changed the don't be gaudy to don't show a little skin. And it progressed and became more and more rigid. And especially in the Pentecostal movement, it became more of if you show your skin as a woman, you're going straight to hell. But it's okay if the men do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's crazy because you know, one of the things we would hear so much around um, the, well, the sex that I was in was that, you know, the, we're, we're taking this back to the apostolic, the, the original apostolic birth of, 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 the, of, the, of the church. And that's where we're finding our roots and that's where we're taking it back to. But like you said, so many ministers do not want to fully embrace the context of the time in which the religion was birthed. And so they will take their modern ideas and inject them into that context and then warp that context to fit their worldview. And <laughs> that's also one of the things that you run across in these churches is your idea of even... So, it gets complicated in a message context because ultimately your view of the Bible is filtered through Branham's view of the Bible. You're filtered through the message lens. But there's even another lens in front of that before you even get there, and you're filtered through the the the, the pastor's lens and his view of context of history and how these things match together. And a lot of times you have men who are not very educated, who read, they get some, you know, um, Bible commentaries and they read through these and some different things. Um, and then they try to make up some sort of a view of history and the context in which these things were written in to, but it always seems to line back up with their original view of things. And then you end up with this even more warped view than even what Branham had to begin with. And it's, it really comes down to uneducated men trying to present themselves as though they are extremely educated and control and manipulate people to see the world through the lens, which they have carefully crafted for themselves. Yeah, they just they take logic and reason and they dump it upside down. In fact, you'll find <laughs> you find countless sermons where they will denounce you if you have logic or reason, which becomes very problematic if you have an analytical mind, which I do. I had to suppress it when I was in the cult. <laughs> but you you can't have logic, you can't have reason because they're going to give you these doctrines that just defy all logic, like causing a man to stumble by looking at your toes. It, the whole thing is just <laughs> its so absurd. And, you know, for me, you have to take a step back and you have to realize that it isn't just that the dress code has strayed further and further and further from the truth of Christianity. The gospel itself has been 
ignored because whenever they they take these things that are completely absurd and they lift them up into greater importance than the gospel of Jesus Christ can you truly say that this is a gospel based church i can't because they they have taken the the simplicity of the gospel and they've so far overcomplicated it <clears throat> that half the people that <laughs> they're denouncing for their toes half the people don't even understand what the gospel is and they have these altar calls you are you secure in your salvation come up to the altar well, half the people are going up there because they have confused them <laughs> as to how salvation works. So they don't know if they're saved, and they keep going up Sunday after Sunday to you know to try to plead with God, please let me know, am I saved? Instead of just preaching salvation and preaching the gospel, right? And it, it gets it gets to the point where you know, as we look at this next clip, where a minister will get to the point where he's accusing women of practically leading double lives. To where they come to church and they dress one way and then they, you know, go, go to a locker room to change into like to play sports or something. And then in a duffel bag, they have a completely different outfit. And it's almost like they're <laughs> just like Superman changing in the phone booth and they're a completely different person. You know, it's it's ridiculous. But, you know, it it's just goes to the fact that when you push these things as far as a lot of these ministers do, you get to such a an unhealthy burden of just ridiculousness that's placed upon the shoulders of women. And it just continues to bash and, and, and just uh, bring them down to such a minute level that it, it's, it's, it's takes all the oxygen out, out of them because it's, it's, it's so oppressive, you know, and, and it, it's, it's crazy to see, but, uh, but let's roll into this next clip and, and, and we'll take a look. Jesus said, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Who is to blame? You. You presented yourself them shorts and slacks. Yes. That's right. Some women say to me not some woman said to me not long ago said I don't wear shorts brother Branham I thank the Lord for that I wear slacks mm. <laughs> Did I read that right Some woman said to me not long ago said I don't wear shorts brother Branham I thank the Lord for that I wear slacks I said that's worse <laughs> Wow it just becomes normal anymore now. You walk around and people, whether they're in church or not in church, or whether they want to wear a dress around the church people and then, you know, roll up their skirt when they're in school or go change into some pants when they're, they got it in their locker room or they got it, and I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been raised in the message. I, I know how some people have done it in class or they get to university or get to college and they'll, they'll dress one way when they leave the house and they got a duffel bag or in their locker and they just, they live a whole nother life and they wonder why they're in sorrow they wonder why they're depressed you know james the bible says who is whosoever adds to from this book or taketh away his parts taken from the book of life and here's a minister who's saying <laughs> that if you cause the man to lust after you jesus said that you women are the ones to blame and i don't remember that being said <laughs> <laughs> passage from the Bible, James. In fact, if you go back and you read, it's, you know, in Matthew 5, Jesus is not to the degree that William Branham does, but, you know, where William Branham says, and you men, Jesus is addressing the male half of his following in this passage and he's saying you men who are just lustful men, and if you look after a woman, you should pluck your own eye out if it's causing you that much of a problem. It doesn't say the women should pluck their eyes out. <laughs> it says the men should. And, and it goes so far to say that if you can't keep your hands off of the women, which is the next verse, then take your, it's better to take your hand than to be denied into the kingdom of God, right? <clears throat> so Jesus is clearly addressing the men. But what these... Like I said earlier, these men have lost the focus of the gospel to the extent that the Bible no longer matters to them. It's the doctrine that matters to them, the doctrine that they have invented, man-made doctrine. That doctrine has more importance than what the Bible says to the extent that when they preach it, if the Bible doesn't say what they have learned in their doctrine, they'll choose the doctrine instead of the Bible. And in doing so, in this case, it's at a direct attack against the women. And then, to, to make matters worse, they tell the women that it is Jesus that is attacking them. 
That's how bad this is. Oh, I know. It, it, it's insane because, you know, like we've talked about and like you just illustrated perfectly there, it's like taking the responsibility off of men for their own actions and placing it upon women, um, let alone all the other things that women have to deal with in this cult and in other movements like it, you know, <laughs> you, you're already giving them a crazy standard to live up to. And then you're also telling them things that are outside of their control is also their fault. It's like you're setting people up for failure multiple times over because it's an unwinnable scenario. You know, you're, 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 you know, it's, it's crazy because like you said, if you read the scripture and you read the intent of, of, of the passage, it's saying men, this is your responsibility to not do this. And if you do this, it is better for you to punish yourself and, 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 and remove the offending parts of yourself that are causing you to stumble. It's not, oh, she wore open-toed shoes, and so therefore women should cover up their feet because it made me feel a way that maybe I shouldn't feel, you know, and it's ridiculous. But but these men, they do not study the Bible like they claim to. They study it through a lens, they, their own lens multiplied by Branham's lens, and we know from a fact that he didn't know his Bible from a hole in the ground from the way that he represented it, you know? And so you compound all these errors upon errors upon errors and how you look at this stuff, and you come away with such crazy doctrines that it is just laughable and absurd. And you know, the, <laughs> the way that they do this, so it's not just the women in their church that they insult. They also insult the people of the city who have no idea that <laughs> that they're not supposed to wear the open-toed shoes. Like, this is not a thing. I, I, if you're a message minister and you're listening to this, which ironically, we, we have message ministers who I know are listening to this. <clears throat> if you're a message minister and you're listening to this and you're making these ridiculous statements on doctrine and then blast all the rest of the city and condemn them to hell, they don't know that they're not supposed to wear, let the women expose the feet, man. I can assure you that <laughs> they do not know this. In the Bible, Jesus wore sandals. The women wore sandals. Everybody wore sandals because that's what you wore in that culture. <laughs> and, and to, you know, it's not just the Hebrews, right? You go into the Greeks and Roman days. They wore the sandals. Even the, the military men, you can find historical artifacts of the sandals that the military guys wore. And, and the women, they, they all wore wore sandals, I can assure you. So when you're blasting the city, the point I'm trying to lead up to this is this. A Christian church has only one single job, one, to bring the community together, to show the people the love of Christ, and to make those who aren't Christian want to become Christian. That's that's their one job. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't get any more simple than that, but they've complicated it. So these men, they want to condemn the people who are <laughs> letting the women show their big toe, <clears throat> and but they're not telling them not to do it. So in other words, they're not leading them to the, the gospel of the big toe. <laughs> so these people will never know this, right? Right. And it, it's so ridiculous. And, and that's a perfect segue into this next clip because we have a minister doing something extremely similar where, you know... It, it's so ridiculous because ministers, they get so offended by these, some of these things that we've talked about and to fit the fact that they would want to proclaim them. It's, it's false doctrine to, 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 to do these things, to wear the flip flops, to do all these things. And it's, it's so silly, you know, and man, I, I it's just, th this is a great perfect example for one of our final clips to just kind of just kind of tie up the absurdity in a nice little bow oh my goodness there's not enough money on earth for me to look like that in public and the guys there you know how they walk with flip oh bunch you wear flip-flops don't you i actually would declare them false doctrine if it was up to me <laughs> but you know how people do they got these flip-flops and you got to kind of put your feet in a certain way like a duck to walk with flip-flops and silk shorts hanging way off his bottom and a wife beater no respect you know why I bring that up because I've drove down a certain road in this city past a certain church in this city and they're dressed just like that when they walk in the house of God yeah, you're right. no respect for themselves no respect for God 
<laughs> you have no respect for God because God gave you a big toe and you're going to show it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it's so crazy that, that the, the, the very fact that flip flops and, and I love that we're kind of ending back up here because we sort of we sort of detoured away and then we come and kind of come back because it's. It just shows the absurdity level that these things go to. And, and these men, they're so offended by a flip-flop that they would want to declare it false doctrine and that it's such a sinful thing to do that even just talking about seeing other people around the, around the town go to church and, they, and you walk, see them walking in and they're wearing flip flops and it's just, he's just so just disgusted. There's just such a high disgust level about this. It's like, Hey man, maybe flip flops is not your style, but it doesn't mean that it's going to send somebody to hell. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And you know, the message is one of the most judgmental religions that you're going to find and all of the splinter groups that emerge from it believe it or not are even more judgmental that's why they splintered off the most judgmental people that you are going to find on the face of this earth and they take every single one of those passages from the bible talking about jesus telling you or the apostles telling you to judge and they twist its meaning, right? The meaning in the Bible is like make a decision, examine something and come to a conclusion, judge for yourself. So in other words, you know, don't just blindly do something, which they want you to. They will only believe, right? Don't blindly do this thing. See for yourself, examine for yourself, study for yourself, judge it, you know, not condemn it and blast it. What they've done is they've replaced the word judge with strong vocally condemn that's that's how how backwards this is but then take that a step further so the, <laughs> this guy's telling all of his all of his men and women in the church that your toes are sexy sisters and you're gonna lead these guys to hell because of your toes and I drove past another church and oh my gosh them prostitutes showed their toes <laughs> so every single person in this church Whenever they're out in the city and they've been trained to judge and condemn and blast and vocally abuse and all of this stuff, right? So they see a woman on the street and, oh, look, brother, she, her toes are showing. You woman who are showing your toes. So then you create this race of people, this, or this not race, but this group of people that they're, they're making fools of themselves because <laughs> the people who they're making fun of and ridiculing and insulting, they're like, what on earth are these people talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know it, it's it's so silly, and and you know the 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 inspiration from the flip flop. I mean, I've not looked into this directly, but it has to be the sandal because they're they're so similar. And like you said, that this the sandal, you know, was worn quite heavily in biblical times, and it's just like, you know. You, you, you mean to tell me that the apostles weren't wearing their sandals when they got together and went to church and somehow it was it the, somehow it's not sissified or anything like that for them to wear sandals. It's it's ridiculous. And, and you know, once again, it, it shows the absurdity levels that these things get to when men preach their own personal doctrines over the pulpit that are not ba bound and grounded in the in the religion that they claim to preach. And it's almost like for self-fulfillment and self-gratification that they can sort of mold people into their ideal versions of what they think people should be. And it's completely unhinged and outside of anything that would be biblical or a biblical standard. But it matters to these men. And so, therefore, they're going to preach it and, and ram it down people's throats over the pulpit. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I've often wanted to do this as a joke. I don't know if you've seen these or not, but there are people who, as a joke, they'll take an old pair of cowboy boots and they'll cut them up and they'll fold part of it underneath and go through the sole where they turn the cowboy boot into a sandal, but it's still got the, the height <laughs> of a cowboy boot. I wear cowboy boots a lot because the way that my toe, my 
foot is arched, the cowboy boots feel better on my feet than anything that is laced. So I'm one of these freaks who I'll wear a suit and cowboy boots. That's that's just, that's me. That's who I am. And I've thought about doing this as a joke because I have all these old cowboy boots that are just worn completely out. But notice these ministers who are blasting the women for their sexy toes, they don't blast the men. So the men can wear these things and what if they turn this into a doctrine? All these men in the message who think the women's sexy toes are sending people to hell, and you're not supposed to do this if you're a woman, but it's okay for a man. We should all s- donate them a large box of these sandals to their church made out of cowboy boots for all of the men t- to wear these things, right? <laughs> I think that's a great idea, John. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you think that's absurd? Try this on for size. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I hate to say it, man. I'm having so much fun, and I've I've actually had to wipe so many tears from my eyes from laughing so hard in this episode. I've got to stop. I can't keep going. (laughs) We've got to stop this. But I'll, I'll just end it on this note. If you're in one of these churches and you're female and they're making fun of your toes, just remember that God is the one that gave you those toes. He gave you your elbow. In the same way, right? You don't find them condemning your elbow when (laughs) when you go out in public. And if you did, you'd probably laugh at them, right? (laughs) Because (laughs) that is stupid. (laughs) And I I seldom I use that word. In fact, I think this is the first time that I've used this word. That is stupid. I'm going to say it. (laughs) If you're condemning the women for their big toe and saying that the big toe is sexy, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> Just <laughs> plain and simple. I'll leave it at that. If you have weird doctrines that you'd like for us to discuss on the show, please contact us on the web. You can find us at william-branham.org. For an in-depth look at the dangers behind these groups, read Weaponized Religion from Latter Rain to Colonia Dignidad, available on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible. 